In this episode, we're going to prepare some textures in Photoshop. So, hi guys, welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny, you can find me on our Facebook page at Retard Pro. In today's episode, I'm going to show you guys quickly how I prepare my textures before working with the texture. All right, so let's get right away into it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've already imported again, first of all, this image into Photoshop. Now I'm at the stage where I actually want to just get my texture ready and see if the texture suits the image and if it's the right texture that I want to add. So ready, I've got again a 50% gray here in the background, so it's a really nice um, image to actually add some texture to that, change blending options and also add it to that. But now before I add the texture, I need to obviously have some texture. On our website, we've got a whole section called Pro Textures where you can find tons of textures. And I've got actually a texture here from that package um, over here, as you guys can see, and we just have a little bit of scratches here from sand and concrete. So we found this concrete wall and it has some really cool scratches on there. And now what I wanna do is take this image here and import it right away into this one. But before I do that, I wanna prepare this texture a little bit. So again, first step that I will do is obviously because it's horizontally and this image is vertical, I want to change this first of all, this canvas. So again, I can either import it straight away, move it over and then rotate it or over here, I can basically just go to image, image size and directly rotate it as well. So do I want it to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise? I'm going to say counterclockwise for the start to just have a look what it will, if it's nicer with the scratches at the top or at the bottom. And yes, I actually think to have these scratches here at the top might even look a little bit nicer. So what I'm going to do is not rotate it again. I'm just going to go to File once more, basically Edit. So I'm going to go to Transform over here, but it's still not visible. So I can't literally do that now. That is because our layer is obviously still locked. So I need to double click on here and just rename this again to Basic maybe. Or I actually can rename it just to Texture. Great. Okay, now it's unlocked. Now I can go to Edit here and say transform and we can just flip this horizontally. All right, great. So now I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, that's the way I want it to be. And I'm gonna add this right away to the second canvas over here. So just move it over to the side, literally take the layer here, hold shift now and just move it over here. Why hold shift? So it clips directly a little bit to the borders. Okay, I'm gonna just close this window again. I don't need it, don't save. Okay, F for full screen mode. And we've got it now. And the second image here is a little bit bigger. It's from a D800. And this image here is from a D3X from Nikon Gear. So it's a little bit smaller, sends a little bit smaller, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna press Command T now and scale this a little bit bigger. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna zoom out a little bit. So I've got a bit more space to work. Press Command T again. Then as well, I'm gonna take an anchor point now here, hold Shift and just drag it out a little bit. So it just gets nice and big. Okay, and I'm going to move it somewhere over here. Yeah, and I want to actually make the scratches a bit more, so more prominent. So I'm going to make it even bigger. A little bit more, okay, like that. And literally just going to drop it somewhere over here. Okay, and now due to that, I'm still like really unsure if I'm going to use the bottom part here as the top or the top part. So what I'm going to do is quickly just go to the blending options here and switch to soft light. So I can directly already get a feel for this. Okay, so I'm kind of having a look at that. Let's maybe go to edit again, transform, flip horizontally. Yeah, and I think this looks actually a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go with this part. Okay, so again, switching the blending options back to normal. And directly, you guys can also see this still looks a bit flat. I want some more contrast in this, so it just stands out really nicely. So again, we need to prepare the texture a little bit more. Next step that I want to do before I even go to adjustments and all the curves and stuff and try to play around to get some more contrast, I'll literally just go into shadow and highlights. So basically, let's go to image over here, adjustments, and we can go to shadow and highlights. Select that. Yours might look like this. So simply just hit here, show more options, and that will open for you. Okay, so I'm gonna take the mount all the way down to zero. So it's basically starting from scratch because it sometimes just starts somewhere randomly. Okay, so first step that I want to do is here just with the mount, maybe just push it to like one or two. So it really boosts the color a little bit and all the shadows and it brightens it up a little bit. Due to that, I can actually now create later another adjustment layer here just with hue and saturation, taking the saturation down a little bit. And it might also give me a cool color with a basic background together mixed on soft light. But let's have a look once we're ready. Then as well, highlights. I don't want to push the highlights. They look great. 
and maybe just under mid contrast down here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is push them up a little bit further just to get really intensive uh, saturation and also some really awesome contrast here. Yeah, and as you guys can see, pushing it up to like 80 is quite intense already, but it looks great for the texture. Okay, I'm done already. I'm just going to say okay. So super simple step. I really like the contrast, enhance that a little bit. Before I even start playing with curves or levels, it's just easier with the shadow and the mid-tone contrast. So again, it's a lot and very saturated. So next step, let's also quickly switch it to soft light so we can directly see the effect. So as you guys can see, the saturation... Due to that it got more, it looks great with the outfit that the guy is wearing and the whole color palette looks kind of nice. I'm actually just here for the textures. I'm not looking at color too much yet. I can always later add in again another fill layer to just get a nice color grade. So let's take the saturation here down just a little bit. So I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation and also clip this right away to the texture layer. So again, hold Alt, go between the two layers here, a little arrow will appear and I can just clip this directly to the texture layer. Great, let's select Hue and Saturation and in the Master Tones here I'm just going to take down the saturation a little bit. Okay, and it's a little bit bluer now. I actually want to give this a other different color grade. So let's take it down like 80% as well. Even more, 90? No, I'm going to go with 80. Okay, can't make up my mind here. <laughs> Alright, great. So then again, I have that right on top and I'm really loving the texture now. I can still go back to texture again, zoom out a little bit, press Command T and also scale this and make this even bigger if I want to. So again, hold Shift, make it a little bit bigger and I can still move this around. Yep, great. I'm going to accept that. Yeah, and that's pretty much all already. Happy with the texture so far, love the contrast on it and it looks a little bit sharp. So the next step that I might would do is still add a little bit of a blurring effect here onto this texture layer. But I don't want to, I'm not sure yet if I want to have it like 5% blurred, 10% blurred. Maybe I'm going to change the blurness after like half an hour retouching. So what I'll do is just change this to a rasterized layer. So basically a smart object. So again, right click on here and just say convert to smart object. Okay, convert to a smart object. Okay, great. And now the next step that I'm going to do is basically go to Filter, Blur, and I'm going to switch to Gaussian Blur. Okay, with Gaussian Blur, I'm basically going to say now, yeah, well, let's go start right away with 2%, okay, which makes it really nice and blurry, but I still want the contrast here. Okay, so again, a little bit blurred, so the foreground stands out a little bit more, and the background is a little bit blurred, so the tension and the detail doesn't go all the way to the background here. Obviously, you will have a lot more yeah, detail and texture and sharpness on the subject than on the background. Let's zoom in. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So it's a little bit out of focus, a little bit depth of field there as well. Obviously, be in mind, we still need to cut out the complete subject here, add it again on top, and some fill layers and stuff. Oh, before I even forget, I didn't even show this now. You've obviously created a smart object. Now we've created a filter with a little bit of blur on top and this basically means that we have, due to that we've created to a smart object, we have the smart filter right here. So if I want to change this after half an hour of retouching, I can literally just double tap on here. It brings me back into Gaussian Blur and once again I can tweak this again. So it's a pretty awesome tool. Okay, I'm going to say cancel, minimize this. I'm happy for the start. Now as well, I'm going to Duplicate this layer, Command-J. I'm not going to show this complete process. We've done this earlier in a other tutorial called Advanced Compositing. So you guys are masking for your composite. So you guys can have a look at that tutorial as well. But yeah, that's my quick technique of just showing you guys how I normally prepare my textures. This was for instance just for this tutorial. But yeah, that's how I work with textures as well. All right, yeah, so as you guys can see, that was a quick tutorial just showing you guys how I prepare the texture. Now as well, this works pretty good with a stone and concrete textures, especially from our pro tutorial or pro texture package. You can also find that on our website. So this is a quick handy technique for me to also enhance detail a little bit through the shadow and detail sliders. Yeah, so that's basically all. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like the episode. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comment box. Then as well, share it with your friends and I'll see you guys all next week for a new Photoshop tutorial. Bye bye guys.